untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a colorless ramp deck featuring Kozilek, the Great Distortion as our commander, has been on Arena for a little while now, but until recently basic wastes were bugged in Historic Brawl, now we finally get to play with them in our mana base as a searchable basic land, especially useful with cards like Solemn Simulacrum that wants to find a basic, so we no longer have to play some off-color basics, and that way we get to maximize the potential of Forsaken Monument, which is one of the main payoff cards for these colorless decks, as it will double the mana produced by our colorless sources, including our lands. Also gives you a great budget replacement. If you don't want to craft a bunch of these rare lands, you can just play a ton of basic wastes instead and still get the most value out of your Forsaken Monument, which will be necessary to ramp into our 10 mana Eldrazi, which requires a double colorless as well. A 12-12 with Menace says whenever we cast it, even if it gets countered, if we have fewer than 7 cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference, so we'll end up with a full grip. And then we can also discard cards with mana value X once Kozilek is in play to counter target spell with mana value X, so it can also potentially counter impactful spells from the opponent if we have the right mana value in hand to discard. Now to get to 10 mana we're going to need some mana acceleration to cast Kozilek in a timely fashion, so over half of the non land cards in our deck are ramp spells. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out at 2 mana, where we have Automated Artificer can make mana for artifacts or activated abilities. We've got the Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. Then the Mirror Convert is another new addition, have to pay 2 life to make 1 mana of any color on a 2-1. And then the Ornithopter of Paradise can also make 1 mana of any color. And the Tablet of Completion, another recent addition, can put oil counters on it. And once it has 2 or more oil counters it can also make colorless mana, eventually maybe draw some cards as well. Then at 3 mana there's a more ramp with a Burnished Heart, which we can sacrifice to get 2 basics. So once again basic waste being very important alongside Burnished Heart. And then we have a bunch of 3 mana ramp artifacts that can make 1 mana, they're all slightly different. Caravan can also be crewed as a 5-5 creature. Dungeon map can be activated to venture into the dungeon. We've got Heirloom as maybe Graveyard Hate. Mana Geode lets us scry 1 when it enters. Terminal we can maybe activate to discard and draw. There's the Relic, once we reach the City's Blessing we can sacrifice it to gain 3 draw card. And then there's the Prismatic Talisman, every time we tap it we gain 1 life. Replicating Ring can eventually get a bunch of replicated Ring tokens which can also make extra mana. There's the Skyclave Relic which we can kick to generate additional copies, also indestructible. Spinning Wheel we can activate to tap target creature. Celestis can switch between day and night for some card selection and life gain. And then there's the Unstable Obelisk which we can also sacrifice to destroy target permanent. So these all offer a little bit of additional utility besides making one mana. And if they actually make colorless mana, so the little diamond symbol, they will be a bit more synergistic with Forsaken Monument compared to the artifacts that make colored mana. Then going over some of the cards we skipped along the way, there's Inspiring Statuary, saying non-artifact spells you cast have Improvise, and as you may have noticed, Kozilek is not actually an artifact despite being colorless, simply an Eldrazi creature, so we can cast Kozilek thanks to our Inspiring Statuary, if we have some random artifacts in play that typically don't make mana. Then there's the Palladium Mirror, a 2-2 creature that can tap for double colorless if it survives. And then the Thran Spider, another recent addition, makes a Power Stone for each player when it enters. And then we can also activate it to maybe find additional artifacts in the top 4 cards of our library. Can be a nice mana sink as well. And then there's the Astral Cornucopia, which we can cast for X equals 1, making it a 3 mana ramp artifact. But we can also sink additional mana into it, at which point it will make even more mana once we tap it. Then moving up the curve we have some more ramp artifacts and I also put Moon Silver Key in this slot as a 2 mana artifact, can pay 1 mana tap and sacrifice it to search our library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land card, reveal it and put it into our hands. So the card we're most often going to search up with Moon Silver Key is going to be our Forsaken Monument which also counts as a valid target giving colorless creatures we control plus 2 plus 2. Whenever we tap a permanent for colorless add an additional colorless and whenever we cast a colorless spell we also gain 2 life. So an awesome card to play around turn 4, and then can set up a turn 5 Kozilek already if we wanted to. Then there's the Farmine Vessel, Hedron Archive and Key to the Archive, all making 2 mana. Then there's a Solemn to find a basic, if it dies draw a card. 
And then a Gilded Lotus can immediately tap for 3 mana, often letting us play another 3 mana artifact afterwards. And then a Paradox Engine remains legal in Historic Brawl for some reason. Incredibly powerful card alongside all these ramp artifacts, because whenever we cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents we control, so we can keep floating mana, as it's called, with our ramp artifacts, cast a spell, untap them, make even more mana, and potentially just empty your hand on the spot. Then the Might Stone and Weak Stone can enter, either drawing two cards or giving a creature minus five, minus five, making double colorless to cast our artifact spells or activate abilities. And finally, the Dreamstone Hedron can make three colorless mana, can also be cashed in to draw three cards. Then our next category includes ways to generate card advantage. Of course, we don't need a ton of card draw in a deck playing Kozilek as its commander, since we're eventually going to get to draw seven, but it doesn't hurt to have a few more mana sinks in a deck that can generate a lot of mana, including a Mace Might Tome at two mana, can simply tap it early on to scry one. One, to make sure we keep hitting our land drops for instance or we can pay two mana to draw reckoner bankbuster also very similar can eventually make a pilot token to crew the 4-4 vehicle as well there is a treasure map which can scry a few times eventually transforming into treasure cove making additional treasure tokens which we can use to either ramp or we can maybe cash them in with a land to draw additional cards the Zenith Chronicler, another new addition, 3-1, saying whenever a player casts their first multicolored spell each turn, each other player draws a card, so some very specific matchups can be a nice source of card advantage on a 2-mana 3-1, and since we don't have any multicolor spells ourselves, the opponent's never gonna get to draw off our own Chronicler. Sculpting Steel can simply copy an artifact on the battlefield, including potentially the opponent's artifacts, can be a nice way to double up on some powerful effects. Karn can provide Karn advantage with the plus one and minus one, or make a large Karnstruct token. We've got the Mystic Forge to play some of our colorless spells off the top of our deck, also very powerful alongside the Paradox Engine, as we can also tap it to remove the top card of our library if we don't like it, to potentially keep going. And then the Immortal Sun will shut down all loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers, don't have many ourselves, can give us a one mana discount on all our spells, give our team plus one plus one, and will also draw an extra card each turn. Then the next section includes a few creatures to win the game with, including a Patchwork Automaton, which will slowly grow over time as we cast more artifacts, has some built-in protection with Ward. Liberator lets us play our artifacts at instant speed, and can also grow over time. Matter Reshaper, another one of the Eldrazi, so not an artifact creature, just a 3 mana 3-2 three when it dies, can also provide a bit of extra card advantage. Nettle Cysts, a great card that will grow the more artifacts we have in play, comes attached to a germ token, but even if it dies we can still move around the equipment, giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Thought Not Seer is another Eldrazi, can exile a non-land card from the opponent's hand when it enters, so it gives us a bit of hand disruption, and when it dies the opponent gets to draw a card in return. Wandering Archaic, another colorless creature that's not actually an Eldrazi, and also not an artifact, a 4-4 that can punish the opponent for casting instants and sorceries, since they'll have to pay 2 mana, otherwise we get to copy them. Wormcoil Engine, another recent addition from the Brothers War, as a 6-6 with Death Touch and Lifelink, leaving behind 2 worm tokens when it dies. Then Sundering Titan, a 7-10 for 8 mana that can destroy one of each basic land type when it enters, and since wastes don't count as a basic land for Sundering Titan, it's only gonna affect the opponent, so hopefully they have plenty of basic types in play for Sundering Titan to destroy when it enters and when it leaves the battlefield. Then we've got a Metalwork Colossus, which we can often cast for free, as it gets a discount from all our non-creature artifacts. And then Hangerback Walker and Stone Cold Serpent, our great mana sinks, get larger the more mana we spend casting them. Stone Cold has Reach, Trample and Protection from Multicolored, whereas Hangerback will leave behind 1-1 Thopter tokens with flying when it dies. And then we've got a bit of removal as well to round out our deck, including the new Filigree Silex, an updated version of a Ranchet Bomb, which we could also play. Then there's Ugin the Ineffable to give our colorless spells a 2 mana discount, which also applies to our Eldrazi. Can also use a plus 1 for card advantage and 2-2 two, two tokens, the minus 3 for removal. And then a Meteor Golem will destroy any non-land permanents when it enters. There's Cityscape Leveler, which can do the same when we cast it and whenever it attacks, giving a Power Stone token in return, also has Unearth on an 8-8 Trampler. Then a Portal to Phyrexia to make the opponent sacrifice 3 creatures when it enters and reanimate a creature each turn. And last but not least, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, another 10 mana Eldrazi, which when we cast it, even if it gets countered, can exile two target permanents, has Indestructible on a 10-10, and when it attacks, it will mill the opponent for 20, exiling those cards in the process. And then finally, the mana base has a ton of utility lands, which is another strength of this colorless deck. Most of our lands have some sort of effect when we activate them or when they enter the battlefield, and I've sorted the more important lands in the leftmost column, and the lands you can easily ignore in the rightmost column, so don't feel bad if you can't craft some of those. 
And then the important lands include Arch as another card draw engine once we reach the city's blessing. Blaststone can also act as removal, similar to the Silex. Blink Moth Nexus can turn into a 1 1 flying artifact creature. Bonder's Enclave, another card draw engine. Buried Rune can get back artifacts from our graveyard. Crawling Barons, a creature land that picks up additional plus one counters every time we activate it. Crystal Grotto lets us scry one when it enters. Citadel, an indestructible artifact land, so we'll increase our artifact count for cards like Nettle Cyst. Inventor's Fair can gain one life if we control three artifacts every turn, and can also sacrifice it to search up any artifact in our deck, so we'll often search up our Paradox Engine to combo kill our opponent. Then there's the Labyrinth to maybe shut down an opposing attacker, can save us a ton of damage. The Mishra's Foundry, another creature land that also counts as an artifact. Mobilized District, another good creature land, gets a discount if we control a Planeswalker. Mutavolt, another 2-2 creature land that's very cheap to activate. Radiant Fountain gains 2 when it enters. The Gardens is another recent addition that can turn into an artifact that's on the battlefield. Then we've got our Basics, and then Zalfern Void can also scry 1 when it enters. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Umezawa, so blue-black ninjutsu deck. And we've got a Keeper. Treasure map into ring, can immediately scry one, sets up our archive. And then uh, we're well on our way to 10 mana for Kozilek. Changeling Outcast, nice unblockable creature to set up there for mana ninjutsu which could cheat some expensive creature into play, so that's quite scary. There's Umezawa. And we'll start with a Replicating Ring. So yeah, the door is open for something powerful. Let's see what they can cheat into play. All right, no ninjutsu. Just take three. And a covetous urge. So we'll let that happen. Probably takes our key to the archive, but we still get to scry with our treasure map. Okay. Should put an upkeep stop to potentially scry again. Burnished hearts I can play, but not quite sacrifice in the same turn. I think I still keep it since it'll give us a mana boost on the following turn. Play a spinning wheel, crawling barons, and then don't want to expose burnished hearts to removal, so we'll just pass. And then we can scry with a map. Field of Ruin, luckily, not a huge deal now that we have basic wastes to search up. Now is the time for ninjutsu. Yeah, Hullbreaker Horror. That's a good one. So if they have a one drop, they can still bounce something afterwards. So that's going to be difficult to keep up with. And the Miscloaked Herald triggers horror. It's going to bounce treasure map. We'll scry in response. And then Honored Heirloom. Is that good enough? So next turn I can play and sacrifice Burnished Heart. Or we can just uh, cast Meteor Golem, which is even better. Take out Holebreaker, since our opponent's going to be tapped out. Yeah, that uh, works. So, do I need Heirloom? I guess a land would be better at that point. So just cast a Meteor Golem. Take out Holebreaker while we can. And then next turn we can keep ramping. Had they bounced a 3-mana artifact, we still would have been able to cast our Meteor Golem thanks to Treasure Map transforming. Can block Umezawa. And opponent has got the Planeswalker, two dry extra cards. There are many I Not bad. Now this is a juicy and they kept up 3 mana as opposed to playing out the Outcast, so they could easily have a counter. I guess we'll start with Burnished Heart. If they counter, we still play Nettle Cyst. And uh, if it resolves, we can just sacrifice it after maybe blocking this bait. Okay. So 
So we can start applying pressure to their planeswalker and play a treasure map. Yes, we'll hit for three. Upkeep stop to scry. Currently six, seven, eight mana. Still two away from Cozy Lack. Okay. Opponent's got a sweeper maybe. Yeah, Meat Hook Massacre for three. At least we still have our equipment left over if we find a backup creature. Bujuka Bog exiles our graveyard. Do have a Crawling Barons in our mana base, which we could use. I know so that's going to be four mana to activate, two to equip. So that still leaves enough mana to scry with a treasure map. And then I think a land is fine. Activate Crawling Barons. And that'll assist equip. And take out Kaito. Our equipment will fall off end of turn, but that's okay. So now we're just a land away from uh, casting Kozilek. So I'm probably not gonna scry an upkeep. Give ourselves a chance of actually drawing a land. And if we fail to do so, we can still scry to set it up for next turn. Opponent with a key to the archive. Although even if they counter Kozilek, we'll still get to draw a ton of extra cards since it's a cast trigger. So hopefully we'll be able to overpower them in the late game. Opponent discarding a Siphon Insight. That's good value. No lands, but a Hangerback Walker. Okay, so in that case... How large a hanger bag can we cast? X equals four. And then still scry with the map. And then next turn by scrying again, making treasures, we'll have the mana for Kozilek. Could see them use Field of Ruin to blow up our Crawling Barons, in which case I'm still going to scry as opposed to equipping Nettle Cyst since we want to be able to transform our map. Okay, opponent going for Siphon Insight, let that happen. So we still don't know what they got of the key to the archive. Hopefully nothing too bank breaking. Crows and grip, yeah, immediately kills our artifact. So now we could be a mana short. A split second, so can't respond to it. Replace outcast. So let's see if we scry into a land. Seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we should still be able to get there, especially with the land. So I'll keep Sanctuary on top. Play it. Transform the map. And a Worm Coil seems like a fine draw once we play Kozilek. Draw 7. And now we have a 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop, and a 6-drop to potentially counter stuff with. And we'll leave the hangar back on defense to potentially get an extra counter here if we want to. Alright, we're in the driver's seat now, hopefully. Although Changeling can still cheat something into play with Umezawa. The Malson. Okay. Do have a blast zone to potentially deal with the one drop later. Although the Malison can also be an unblockable threat. So we'll probably need to get the worm coil going to gain life back. Talisman can also help a little bit. So I might prefer keeping the treasure to go with our treasure cove and to just provide an extra mana as opposed to growing the hangar back since a 4-4 seems large enough. They could also field of ruin our treasure cove but seems like they have other plans. Six mana and of course ninjutsu gets around our counter spells from Kozilek. Blood on the snow. So that could get back their kaito as well. Not sure if we mind but I could counter it with a worm coil engine here which is maybe still better. 
does mean we no longer have our huge life linker. But we get to keep Kozilek to potentially kill the opponent in two attacks. Feels powerful enough. And then Nettle Cyst can maybe equip to Kozilek. Yeah, I guess our opponent has seen enough here. Getting to untap with all that mana, all these cards in hand. Yeah, it's possible that just equipping Nettle Cyst to Kozilek and then putting enough artifacts in play is a way to present lethal as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a blue-green proliferate deck. And we've got a keeper. Hopefully Mir survives, setting up an early monument. Maybe should have scryed to try and find a 2-mana ramp artifact, which we don't have yet. Alright, we'll uh, scry now. Alright, didn't get punished. Bottom to land. And a replicating ring. Yeah, that's pretty neat if they can proliferate onto it a few times. Gonna put my faith in Mirror surviving. And then next turn we can already play Monuments. And potentially follow that up with something else. Canker Bloom can destroy my Mirror. But I guess it could have also blown up our Monuments, so I'll take it. And Stadium, also fun with Proliferate. Okay, let's mana geode it up. Now I wouldn't mind an extra land. So we'll keep a Treasure Vault and pass it back. So our opponent could play Azuri for 7 mana, draw 2, Proliferate twice. But we'll see. It's going to be a Vivian to play things at instant speed. Although Immortal Sun could shut her down. So maybe we start with Immortal Sun. Not sure if we need to play around counter spells. So they exiled a creature, presumably. Play Immortal Sun. Hope it resolves. Okay, Vivian's now shut down. Probably still see them flash in a creature here. That still works. And it's going to be Tankathal to double proliferate. Uh oh. They might end up winning the game with a Stadium here, if we're not careful. Do have a Loveler coming up soon. Opponent pays to proliferate twice. Stadium up to seven counters. And it only takes ten to win the game, so they can get up to eight right now. All right, we're in trouble. Draw with Immortal Sun. Okay, let's do some math. So if I play Monument first, that's four mana. I would have essentially six mana afterwards, not enough for Leveler. So I think we just have to cast Leveler here then, blowing up Stadium. Opponent activates their Dominus in response to remove some counters, make it indestructible. That's fair. Okay, so we're still in trouble here. Opponent got the extra mana from a Replicating Ring. They can do a lot of powerful things. Hydroid for 8. Yeah, that's a good starting point. 6 mana left. And a Midnight Clock can also start ticking up. 5 mana left. Or a Staff of Completion, which can also proliferate. And an Ozolith. So opponent's got all the proliferate synergies going. Thrumming Bird can also hit us to proliferate. Let's see if we can keep up. Step one's going to be to play Monument, tapping our colored mana sources. And then it's going to pay for itself, basically. Okay, and then maybe start with Key to the Archive, or do we start with a Mystic Forge, play stuff off the top? Sure. Can use Treasure Map to scry things to the bottom. Okay, Free Colossus, sign me up. 
And then I could play a 2 mana a Relic, which will tap for only 1 mana since it's colored. Probably still fine. One mana Maze Mind Tomb, who went a portal to Phyrexia. That would be fun to draw. So, could draw using Maze Mind Tomb. And then Ring also makes colored mana. So, yeah, we'll draw with the tomb. And that's. All we can really do here can still treasure map. And then I'll probably just activate Forge to get rid of the terminal. Okay. And then Leveler can attack. Probably go after the opponent's life total since Vivian cannot activate. And then it's unclear what we want to get rid of, since our opponent can block with Krasis to move the counters to Ozolith and then move them elsewhere, which is kind of scary. Um, I guess Tekothal will probably just soak up some damage here too, so they could take out the leveler. Do we just kill Azuri? Or do we kill Thrummingbird? Staff of Completion is also scary. Killing Azuri feels bad too when they can just replay it and draw more cards after proliferating. So it's kind of rough. Yeah, maybe go after a thrumming bird anyway. Opponent's gonna double block. Should probably still take out Krasis, even though if they move it to the uh, Ozolith. They could then move all the counters to the indestructible Tacothal. Can still maybe make them sacrifice it and the fewer creatures the more effective portal will be. Okay, let's see what they can come up with here. Blast zone, not a huge concern. And the Simic Ascendancy, uh oh. They need 20 or more counters. Also, Lith is a good starting point, already up to 8. So if they proliferate a few times here with a staff, they could easily win with a Simic Ascendancy, which would be fun to see, honestly. Okay, Mindstone is free to play here with our 1 mana discount. Even makes more mana with a Monument, actually. And then is it time for Portal? Hope it resolves. Or maybe Baits with Key to the Archive. Could also get rid of our top cards with... Mystic Forge, see what's next. Another land. Could scry that to the bottom in a multitude of ways. Let's say with a map. Another land. Alright, let's see if Key resolves before taking another step. And a time warp seems powerful. Although we might be a little light on colored mana at the moment. And then discards Ring, although Ring makes colored mana to cast a time warp. So maybe Nexus goes. And then, yeah, let's say we play the Ring. Then I still have Grotto to filter mana so we can time warp. See if that resolves. It does, perfect. Then we can still draw with Tomb. Don't have the mana to play Portal. No point in attacking with Colossus. Let's play our Deserts. And then can take up Blast Zone if I'd like. Okay, take our extra turn. And now it seems clear our opponent doesn't have any counter spells. So Portal should be able to resolve and clear a path for Colossus to attack. Alongside maybe Leveler could be lethal. No attacks. Take our extra turn. Okay, Thought Knot could make sure the coast is clear. 
Opponent still has a creature in exile they can potentially flash in, thanks to Vivian. So we want to make sure Portal gets three creatures. Opponent tapping out for Stone Coil for 13. Okay, so that means Simic Ascendancy would win the game, since they now have 21 counters on it. But it's only their upkeep. So we need to win right now, basically. Opponent has five mana left, potentially can still flash in a creature. But, uh... Yeah, let's say we play Portal, and then bring back a Leveler, that might do it. Portal resolves, and then Leveler could also just unearth to destroy the Simic Ascendancy. Opponent draws in response, maybe hoping to find a creature. They don't. Okay. Also, Lith gets a bunch more counters, but let's unearth Leveler. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Get to attack for lethal as well as destroy Simic Ascendancy. But props to our opponent. They actually got to 20 counters. Okay, we're on the draw. Facing the five color shrines. So hopefully they don't have too much in the way of uh, artifact removal. But our hand has potential. Ring sets up Lotus. And then Paradox Engine could be making a lot of extra mana untapping these artifacts. And then uh, Colossus we can also cast for very cheap, potentially even for free, which is another way of untapping our stuff with Paradox Engine. Got a few ways to blow up the opponent's lands, which could potentially mess up their mana in a 5-color deck, but I would still rather get my own mana going. So Ring, next turn Lotus plus Dungeon Map. As our opponent gets their commander going. And then I think we wait on playing Colossus just to have that free untap with Paradox Engine next turn. Sanctum, that's okay. We'll drain us for a bunch. Does quickly add up. Alright, opponent might have a counter spell up, but uh, there's only one way to find out. So we'll tap these. Play Paradox Engine. That worked, and then now Colossus will untap all our mana artifacts, and then we can still play an Ulamog. Don't mind if I do. And then what to exile here? Got a lot of options. Could have probably played a Skyclave Relic Kicked before casting Ulamog, but our opponent already throws in the towel. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Delina Wild Mage. What do we think of our hand? Convert might die to some early removal. Otherwise, we have a decent amount of ramp. Although we can probably do better, honestly. Yeah, this seems a bit better. Turn 3, Mana Geode sets up turn 4, Lotus. And then we can flash in the Battle Thopter as well, if we'd like. And that'll assist a large blocker. Put it off to a quick start as well. We'll need an extra land, so we'll scry into one, hopefully, with the Mana Geode. Matter Reshaper, we probably don't need right now. If we fail to draw lands, what's our move? Ooh, Captain Lannery is a good one. And a Boots. So yeah, they're setting up for a powerful Delina turn here, coming up. Alright, found a land, luckily, so Lotus. And then Battle Thopter versus Nettlesists. Battle Thopter's not going to ambush Delina, although now with the boots they can fly over the Nettle Cyst as well. So probably start with a Battle Thopter so we can start growing it. And then uh, we'll be able to play everything at instant speed. But our opponent's got a lot of extra mana going already, so I'm a bit concerned. Burning Suns, okay. So, deals three to us, and then next turn... They can maybe have enough mana to play Delina and somehow give it haste. Otherwise they might have been better off playing Delina first. But we are under quite a bit of pressure. Flash in the Battle Thopter.
gain a life off Inventor's Fair, which we could also sacrifice, but I don't think we have anything specific to get right now. Even if we get something like Paradox Engine, I'm not going to be able to combo off with it just yet. So instead, we can play our Dreamstone at instant speed, 5 mana left, play Nettle Cyst, play Chronicler, and then we should probably start with a Chronicler to grow a Liberator even more. Okay. And then we'll have a lot of mana to set up Kozilek to maybe go off with Mystic Forge. And Nettle Cyst is going to be quite large, potentially large enough to set up a profitable block. Okay, there's Perforos to give the team haste. And it's already a creature thanks to the 3 Devotion from Burning Suns. Opponent attacks, makes a treasure. In response, let's say we flash in Chronicler. Play Dreamstone. And then Nettle Cyst. Okay, that's going to be a 6-6 six, six token. So enough to trade for Burning Suns. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Venser, Proliferate deck. And we've got a Keeper. Mindstone ramping into an early Forsaken Monument could be incredibly powerful. Doubling all our mana, essentially. And... Uh, with an Ozolith. We see a Venser on two. We do. So they can make a 3 3 and then give it lifelink and flying. Okay. Turn to Mindstone. Then next turn Vessel. Vessel doesn't synergize with Monument, but will still help us get it in place sooner. So that works for me. Dreadhorde Invasion, also quite synergistic with uh, Ozolith potentially. But uh, yeah, let's get this vessel going. Cold Steel Heart gives the opponent some ramp and a Mindstone. Could see something pretty expensive next turn. Our plan is Monuments, and then can still play Bankbuster and draw with it. And then next turn we could cast Kozilek, or maybe Sundering Titan, blow up a swamp and an island. Okay, Shadow Heart can specialize here. I'll read it once it's relevant. Okay, drains us for one. We'll draw. Yeah, maybe playing Sundering Titan first, emptying our hands a little bit more before playing Kozilek is worth it. Could play a Might's Tone as well. Opponent draws in response. Could take out Venser. Probably better taking out the creature they cannot replay. And then should have the mana to still play Heirloom before Titan. Okay. Destroy Island and Swamp. And then we can still draw with a Bankbuster here. And then hopefully draw a fresh hand with Kozilek. Even if they counter Kozilek, we'll still get to draw since it's a trigger. Opponent wants counters on Ozolith for some reason. Kaito, okay. We'll draw. And then we'll draw with a Bankbuster still. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, too far behind. That Sundering Titan was quite devastating. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing Stram, so mono white auras or equipment. And uh, our hand is a little bit on the slow side. I think we gotta look for a more explosive hand since Stram is gonna apply a lot of pressure early. This could work. Opponent's unlikely to have a ton of removal, so Mir can survive and give us a mana boost. For now, I can wait on the scry from Grotto. And then the scry with the tome instead. Do want an extra land in the next turn or two, so. Dreamstone? Hmm. That is tempting. If we keep Dreamstone, we'll very quickly get to Kozilek. Just need to get to six mana first. And then now we can scry. Idle to the bottom, play Mirror. And then scry for another land, most likely. Solma can now fetch basic wastes, which is great. Opponent running out a twin blade, just a 1 1 double strike, but also has a swords. That's a setback. So they had some cheap removal after all. Now we definitely need to find a land with a scry, put a stop on upkeep just in case. Stone Coil can go to the bottom. And then scry again. Talisman, not a land. Alright, still nothing. We can still play an obelisk at least, but uh, getting a bit concerned now. Put another upkeep stop to scry again, gain some more life. And Cartouche, the first card to draw with Stram. On a double striker will also quickly add up. And now a Spectral Steel. Okay, so we're taking 10. At least Solm can chum block. So I'm gonna scry once again. Burnished Heart, also not a land. Okay, we finally got there. So now I can play Solemn over Thought Knots. Keep ramping. Get our beautiful basic wastes. Possible I should have been taking a Blast Zone all along to destroy all two drops. Boon, another aura. Plus one, plus one, and flying, so no more chum blocking allowed. And all that glitters, alright, that's probably gonna just kill us right now. 9-9 nine, nine double strike, yeah, if they attack all out, they would have 19 exactly. GG's, so some powerful disruption with swords, and then uh, loading up on a double striker, always a good plan in the aura deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gargos, a Vicious Watcher, a Hydra deck. All our hand is kind of powerful if we can get to 4 mana. Statuary doesn't help to get to 4 mana for the artifacts, but will eventually be helpful with casting Ulamog and Kozilek. So I'll try it. Hopefully pick up some cheaper ramp in the meantime. Okay, spinning wheel will do. Mono green, of course, could have quite a few answers to artifacts, which is our main concern. We're not going to play too many creatures that Gargos will fight with. And if we exile it with Ulamog, they also don't get to fight. Okay, Viper with Hydra's Growth will start doubling quite quickly. For now, play Relic maybe. And then next turn we can Archive into another 3-drop. Opponent cultivates. Should still be able to cast an Ulamog before we die to the Moss Viper. And Gardens could also copy one of our ramp artifacts. Okay, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana next turn. So not quite enough for the Eldrazi, but we're getting close. So we're at 14. 
So next turn double, this becomes a 9-9. So I guess we would actually be dead. That's a problem, so I'm gonna have to use Spinning Wheel to tap something down. How much mana do I have left? That's 5. So I guess we still get to play Statuary, which will then help us cast Ulamog next turn. Okay, that works for me. Hope they don't have a protection spell, so I should maybe use a spinning wheel now. Before they potentially draw into one. Okay, so we're at 14. Take 9, down to 5. And big turn coming up. Scry, Sculpting Steel. Probably not really necessary. Cast Ulamog. Actually should have kept my Relic untapped to potentially gain extra life by sacking it. But uh, if this works, we should be fine. Okay, we're at 5. But our opponent just has our Lanor Elves back. Replace Gargos. And we get to untap. So... Tome can also tap for mana thanks to the statuary now. So we can run that out before playing Kozilek. And again, we'll leave the relic untapped now. Okay, that should do. So we get to draw six. And now we can counter a two drop, three drop, four drop, and five drop. So we've got most of their curve covered. Should probably keep Ulamog back just to be safe. And then next turn we'll start attacking. And then Paradox Engine can also untap our creatures to give them vigilance. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just a little bit too far behind here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is quite promising. Key can activate a turn 3 after playing Relic, can get our Monuments, which will double our mana. And then we're off to the races. So, do I want to scry right now? I've got my next couple turns lined up, so probably don't need to. Opponent on another 5 color Shrines deck. Getting the Tablet going first could also be better. Sure. Although by playing key on 2, we would have been able to play Monument on 4 and then double mana on 5. This might delay that by a turn. But we'll have access to an earlier Might Stone, potentially. So, for now... Play Relic. Oil Counter on Tablet. And then Might Stone can maybe take out their commander. Although they have a mana for protection, potentially. So, if we play Might Stone, we can still play Key and activate it, which seems worth it. Okay, and then we can activate during the opponent's turn, but I'm guessing Monument is the pick. Opponent's gun to Sanctum of All, that's scary. Definitely the most powerful shrine. So we'll have to try and overpower it. Take one. And get our Forsaken Monuments. Okay, so make some mana. Well, I meant to tap this for colorless mana instead of putting an oil counter on it, but I guess we can go back. That's too bad. Definitely wanted to tap Relic first before playing Monument, since that doesn't make double mana, since it's colored mana. And then Scry Ulamog seems good enough. 
And then I can still play Nettle Cysts, or I guess a Terminal into Nettle Cysts still works. So I don't think the missed mana from Tablets ended up making a huge difference. Could have deployed a Mana Geode here. So next turn Ulama can take out Sanctum, plus maybe something else. And then we have Kozilek to refuel. The Black Shrine can start draining us. Sterling Grove. Well, that protects their enchantments, giving them Shroud, so not what we wanted to see at all. So now we're definitely still uh, on the back foot. Yeah, can take out Sterling Grove, and that's it. I guess a land as well. But the Sanctum of All can basically win the game by itself. Play Geodes, Cry. And then we need Kozilek to step up next turn. Hit for 7. Can add an oil counter to the tablets to eventually draw. Opponent is at 18, although they'll gain a bit more life of the stone fangs. And now they get a bunch of extra mana from Fruitful Harvest. And 9 mana total. Life's Origin, step 1. And a Destiny Spinner. So we're gonna need a pretty spectacular Kozilek here to stand a chance. Okay. Can maybe play Dungeon Map first. So we draw an extra card of Kozilek. Okay, Inventor's Fair can get any artifacts, although it doesn't leave a lot of other mana. Ugin can blow up either Sanctum of All or Sanctum of Stone Fangs, although Life's Origin can get those back. So Ugin's probably a good starting point, discounting the rest of our spells. Get the Inventor's Fair going. I mean, Sanctum of All is probably the biggest problem. Well, it's minus it there. And then... Attack. Can flash in some artifacts here with a... Battle Thopter to grow Nettle Cysts. And wow, opponent actually scoops it up. Didn't think they were necessarily dead here, but I'll take it. So yeah, got to see our colorless Eldrazi ramp deck in action. And Kozilek is quite powerful if you can get to it, giving you a way to reload after spending your early turns ramping. So it kind of tops off our curve perfectly. And there's a ton of powerful artifacts to round out your deck nowadays, so it's not a struggle like it used to be. And the basic wastes also big help, especially if you're on a budget and don't want to spend wild cards on all those rare lands. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.